Let's say you've got some kind of controversial worldview. For example, you think men being sexually attracted to other men is okay. But there's an entire world of people out there that disagree. How would you go about persuading them? Should you go about persuading them? Is it even worth the effort trying to convert these people? Or will they just never understand? In this game, Deconstruct Team attempts to change your mind. Gods Will Be Watching is quite possibly one of my favourite games of all time. I love this game, and well, that's really all you need to know. I did write a whole paragraph explaining in depth exactly why I love it, but it's not relevant. This isn't a Gods Will Be Watching review, but if you need proof of my devotion to this game then check out my giant Gods Will Be Watching poster. They never actually sold posters, but I decided I wanted one anyway and upscaled a smaller image to strangely favourable results. At a distance, that is. Basically, I was one of the few people that really liked this game, so when the creators, Deconstruct Team, released their second game, I got very excited. The Red Strings Club. The game is predominantly set in a bar, The Red Strings Club, and right off the bat we're introduced to our two main characters, Donovan and Brandeis. Brandeis. Brandeis? You know, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this guy's name any further, because I know whatever I'll say there'll always be comments going, oh it's actually pronounced Brandos. So from this point on we shall henceforth refer to this dude as... Not Donovan. Hey you! Yes you! Have you ever wanted to be a bartender? No? Great, because now you can. This game has three major mechanics, model making, phone calling, and of course, bartending. And it works pretty good. You gotta pour the right amount of spirit to move the little circle over one of several emotions. It's simple, yet satisfying. It's little mechanics like these that give the Red Strings Club its charm and makes it such a unique experience and furthermore- What the hell? It would appear we have a visitor. A notably limber visitor. Yeah, that's not how bodies are supposed to work. But who is this intruder and what are they doing here? Let's find out. Akara 184, an android, built by some super corporation to operate on... How did they get to the club? Well, it's something to do with terrorists and being shot or something, and now they're here with us. So I'm not complaining. Our good man Donovan sets her up as some kind of greeter and holy f she's cute. It's here that the main section of the game begins, and with it, we're finally getting near the main topic of this video. You see, after you serve each patron, Akara asks you a series of questions based on that patron's emotions, intentions, worldviews, etc. Gradually, as the game goes on, you delve more and more into the ethics of brainwashing and free will. And eventually, Akara is quizzing Donovan on what is essentially mind control, asking a series of questions based on the idea that if I could stop people doing bad things, should I? How should I regulate depression and anxiety? Depression is part of being human, don't regulate it. Should I let people commit suicide? Well, you couldn't just let them die, could you? Should I allow rape to occur? Well, no, of course not. You get the idea, Akara poses a moral dilemma and you answer yes or no. Should I let women remain oppressed? Yes, no, or... Wait. There's a third option. Okay. Go on. I'll bite. Show me what you've got. Well, I'm not entirely sure what I expected. A third mysterious option for this one question about female oppression. A hotly debated topic across the internet. If that's not bait, I don't know what is. Coming away from this section, I wasn't exactly sure how I felt about it. Was I really that ignorant of women's issues? 
or had I just been force-fed feminist drivel? I mean, I know, as a straight white man, that third wave feminism is pointless. I watch Shoe on Head every day, and that's what she says. And she's a lady, so she knows what she's talking about when it comes to women's issues. There are women all over the first world that'll tell you they're oppressed and how terrible the patriarch is, so much so that it almost feels normal. But in the context of this game, it seems... odd. From this point on, there's going to be a couple of pretty hefty spoilers, so if you want to experience this game for yourself, and I highly recommend that you do, stop watching now and go buy it. It's like $15, it's well worth the price. The Red Strings Club does an extremely good job of introducing arguably controversial topics and making them seem completely normal. I think the best example would be the game's main protagonists, Donovan and... not Donovan. Okay, whatever, Brandeis. You could get through the entire game and it wouldn't be unreasonable to think that they were just best bros. Hints are dropped throughout and in some paths it just downright tells you. But even then, the really stubborn or unaware might just assume, ah, oh, partners in crime. It's not until the end of the game, after you've really gotten to know them and understand them and like them, that the game comes clean and it's pretty much like, yeah, they're together. You might be thinking, so what? How is this special? Well, my point is, they're not making a massive deal out of it. They're not making it the game's selling point, being all like, look at us, our main characters are gay, look at how progressive we are, and remember that one dude from ages ago? Well, guess what? He was gay too! Instead, they've taken something that should be seen as normal and present it as if it is normal because it is normal. And I think this does an infinitely better job at helping people come around to an idea they were previously against than just, you know, shouting mindlessly at them. Humans, it seems, really hate being told what to do. Tell them to do something and they won't. Make them think it's their own idea and they'll be only too happy to follow orders. Humans have a deep, compelling desire to be unique and different. Command them to do something and they'll often do the opposite out of spite. Say if a YouTuber made a video and at the end they say, do not like this video. It's likely that their like count would be higher than if they'd said nothing. Partly because they're reminding viewers that the like button is actually there, and also partly because of all the viewers who think they're being clever and unique by purposely disobeying orders. In reality though, they've all fallen into the YouTuber's trap, as they predicted their viewers could be manipulated in such a way. It's ironic that this desire to be unique is what makes us all so goddamn predictable. Going back to our game and applying this theory, we can get an idea of how pointless and counterproductive Akara's statement actually is. Insulting the people you're trying to persuade is just going to turn more of them against you. And the worst thing about it is that Deconstructing seems to understand this. When you consider how every element of the game conveys its message, using the utmost subtlety to get the point across, the offending question seems to stand out even more. Larissa, for example, isn't introduced as the transgender woman. It's just Larissa. You can work out the rest for yourself. We don't even find out she's a marketing director until later. And that's just another point. Every single female character we're introduced to, bar one, is a high-ranking employee of the biggest corporation in the city. Marketing director, corporate lawyer, consultant engineer, human resource manager, chief operations officer? The only female not employed by Supercontinent Limited, as it's called, is a freedom fighter. And they're fighting for freedom from big corporations. But you know, maybe women's rights is second on the agenda. The point is, how am I supposed to believe that women are oppressed when the game clearly shows me otherwise? Well, the writer of the game actually addressed this issue and he covers most of what I've said. His justification is, Women may be considered equal in one country, but what about other countries, other cities? But the Red Strings Club isn't other countries or other cities. You had a chance to represent inequality and you knew how to do it effectively. So why didn't you? But maybe that's not the point. And then it hit me. 
The point isn't to persuade you, to make you accept homosexuality or transgender people or some other philosophy. The point is to make you question, to question yourself, to question the game, to actually be insulting, to lure angry YouTubers into making 10 minute videos on a single stupid question asked by an imaginary robot in a video game. Whatever the reason, it could be perceived a hundred different ways. It could be the beginning of some revolutionary new philosophy. Or alternatively, it could just be there to spark online debate and get free advertising. Either way, I'm just happy it gave me an excuse to talk about an incredible game and everything it did right. This meme will never die because we are in the beam. Be